Welcome to the Good Vibes Podcast with former Navy SEAL Clark M. Pistato and entrepreneur at large, Ryan G. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Good Vibes Podcast. This is episode 26. Can you believe it? Holy shit. That is, uh, it's flowing, man. I'm it, digging it. It is, man. We're racking them up. I love it. Well, as you guys know, this is the Good Vibes Podcast with me, Clark Ipostato, and Ryan G. Again, this is our 26th episode. Pretty super pumped about that. And this is entitled The Great Outdoors. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna do some hippie shit today, and we hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's nothing wrong with getting outside and you know building a fire and doing all that kind of guy stuff. Yeah, yeah dude, man. my my inner hippie from my Colorado days growing up is gonna come out today. So we're gonna see a different side of Clarky, I think. <laughs> yeah, and and all its seriousness, I I think we might want to start with um, telling the audience that. Um, what led us to talk about this and think about it, that if um, next week you guys are going to be in for a surprise, Clark, why don't you tell them who our guest is uh, next week? Yeah, Chris Ryan. It's going to be awesome. And that dude is definitely uh, an outdoors guy. <laughs> and he made a comment that inspired this Yes. Episode. Why don't you share the comment? I mean, Yeah, well, he was talking about in the, the selection process, he was an instructor. And too many of these kids that were going through were just a part of the Nintendo generation. They were just uncomfortable outside, whereas we grew up outside. Like, we didn't go home but to sleep and eat. Yep. Nowadays, you know, everyone's got real strong thumbs from texting and playing video games, but they just are uncomfortable outside. And so that inspired us, like, oh, man, we could do a whole episode on that. So here we are. Yeah. And I, you know what I found interesting? And, and you know, we were chatting before interviewing uh, Chris, but he actually said that that kids are coming in to the teams, the SAS for selection, and they're having to send them to school to learn how to basically play in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a familiarization course because they're so uncomfortable. They don't know what to do. Yeah. So, so that's what we're going to cover today. Well, let's get to our cheers. That's the best part of the show, in my opinion. Ah, gosh, that's good. (laughs) Love that sound, brother. Here we go. Cheers. Cheers, brother. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's good. Oh, once it hits the lips. <laughs> oh, real quick before I get into uh, the shout outs and our check out my Beavis and Butthead shirt. <laughs> no way. See, you know, yeah. that's why at 90s episode, we, it might be warranted because I yeah, mean, you got Beavis could. and Butthead, Ren and Stimpy. We might have to do a cartoon episode. Ren and Stimpy, dude. I know. They're bringing it back, it. by the way. They're bringing it oh, back. Oh, are they? I love that. They are. Ren and they Stimpy are. were great. Actually, I got this shirt in Puerto Rico, oddly enough, at Walmart. So it, Puerto Rico is like, you're somewhere tropical, but it's still America and <laughs> slightly sketchy. Now, <laughs> I now, loved it. <laughs> how much Puerto Rican rum did you have before buying that shirt? Oh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Puerto Rican rum was a daily thing. Man. Wait, oh. did you say you went to Walmart in Puerto Rico? Yeah, they got Walmart, Home Depot. Oh, my gosh. I mean, everyone has a Walmart adventure story, but I can't imagine going to Walmart in Puerto Rico. It's like a 10X adventure story. (laughs) Well, Walmart in Puerto Rico is like going to a strip club. There's a lot of hot chicks. (laughs) Walmart, I don't know. It was in a good neighborhood, and you see these J-Lo's walking around. It's an island of big butts. You're just like, what? Oh, my gosh. Let's go to Walmart. I don't know. What do we need? Does it matter? Let's go to Walmart. I need (laughs) Q-tips. (laughs) <laughs> yeah we'll buy something jeez man skinny jeans and high heel shoes for days at puerto rico god bless you we got we got some puerto rican listeners so hey good yeah. on you man awesome Cheers. island you got no no kidding Cheers. man what uh so who are we shouting out today uh a shout out i'm gonna shout out to my wife goose oh. for allowing me to do this because she always uh and i say allowing in the terms of supporting she's always very supportive and i feel bad for her because as everyone knows, I work six days a week and then I rush home and I'm so excited to do this and I can't stop talking about it all day. And Ryan and I are on the phone with all these ideas and things and notes and papers everywhere. And, and so I wanted to thank her for always supporting me. And, uh, and she's been very patient because I know she's got to be like, hey, he goes right into that room and throws those silly headphones on and it goes at it. So <laughs> well, as always, without the support of our gals, we wouldn't be much. So I wanted to thank them all out there, but specifically mine, man. Now, now look what you did. You put me in a position. 
I mean, what, what do I say to that? So, of course, I have to thank my wife for the I don't support. think either one listened to it, our show, but maybe you know, they did. I, I don't know, but it, I don't want to get risk getting in trouble. But in all yeah, seriousness, you get, yeah. you're right. There's bet- behind every you know, guy, there's a, there's a better woman. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously our wives are very supportive and, and I got to give a, also a shout out to my kids because, uh, you know, obviously, you know, they need to support me and they don't, they don't bother daddy for an hour plus. So it's, it's nice. Yeah. So, but and yeah. that's important, you know, cause it, it's tough on them. They know that, Oh, they're doing something or they're trying to build something. And so it's, yeah, it definitely helps if everybody's on board for sure. So we think, think all you, guys and gals and kids out there supporting whoever it is you support that's uh awesome and we support you guys yes all of our good vibes family out there we really appreciate uh you know every episode the numbers are growing the the youtube is growing all that stuff is going great you know share it with your friends tell them about it we want to spread spread the love and uh you know there's a lot of crazy shit going you know on in the world right now so we hope this week it's and it gets it's worse. It's tough not to get wrapped up into it. So our goal is to give you a break from it. You know, that's why we want you to share it with your your friends and family and word of mouth is is the best way. If you enjoy us, you know, tell tell your people about us because we want to have a good time. We still want the two way communication, you know, the good vibes dude at gmail.com. At least for now, that probably will get upgraded or something at some point. But send questions comments we got a couple of funny emails to talk about today towards the end like we do i love those because it just some of the questions that i'm asked i'm like that's fucking awesome it's i never would have thought of that <laughs> it, it keeps us on our toes and and again i i want to show definite appreciation um you know to everyone tuning in also to the youtube uh those comments you know clark and i read everyone and again we appreciate the support but it's very encouraging so it, it's motivating us so we thank you uh to our to our listeners so thank you yeah it's very humbling thank you guys so much uh before we really jump into the nitty-gritty of the great outdoors i want to uh to thank our sponsor this is uh this episode like the previous couple is brought to you by project warpath it's an awesome lifestyles company you can find them on instagram at uh, warpath uh, project warpath and then uh projectwarpath.com so check them out they got cool shit they just had a, a run of uh, skateboard decks they got shirts stickers uh yeah. the owner is a gnarly i got you know, a, a shirt coming guy. because again with with all the crap going on out there yeah. i personally have to make a statement so yeah and he definitely is bold with his statements and his company stands behind it and he's rocking and rolling i had a good conversation with him he's got the whole family involved helping you know with all the stuff going on behind the scenes and so Good. It's nice to see, like we just talked about the support we have from our families. It's the same thing at Project Warpath. They got the whole tribes in on it, helping out. And of course, he's got an army of brothers supporting them. And so for all Love you it. guys out there, Project Warpath is, is supporting us and we want to support them back. It's a win-win for everybody. And if I didn't believe in the company, they wouldn't be a sponsor. Nope. They're a good company. We're not going to get sponsored by like Tampax or anything crazy. <laughs> Why well, they cut well, a big enough check? I might be like, hey, yo, hey. There's yeah, nothing wrong with carrying it in your blowout bag. They're pretty good for wounds. So. They are, yeah. Or, or just, you could, yeah, <laughs> shove them in your nose. Or, yeah, exactly. yeah. They do so, make good trauma kits, yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited to talk about the great outdoors. I, I, you know, it almost makes me think of our 80s episode because, again, mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of flashbacks for us. But as you said in the intro, um, you're right. I mean, our generation did grow up um, from the minute the sun came up to going down. I mean, we were outside. We, you know, that's when go outside and play wasn't a chore. It wasn't a hassle. It wasn't a punishment. It's, it's just what we did, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's kind of funny you mentioned that. I remember when my daughter was living with me in Arizona, I told her, for 30 minutes a day, you have to go outside and do something. And she was terrified. She literally said, but dad, what do I do? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? The only time I came in was asleep and eat. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep, you know, building a tree fort or climbing trees or spy on the neighbors or throw a rock at something. Like it was just magical. And nowadays kids are terrified. Like, is there an app for that? You know, like like, what does outdoors mean, you know? No, and, and that's right. And I think it's the, the problem is there's access to technology and they're growing up as that technology generation. And this is why these kids aren't spending time outdoors. I mean, I actually feel lucky and I'm sure you'd agree because, you know, I mean, we might have 
you know, Atari or maybe first edition Nintendo, there wasn't that yeah. temptation. No one had a, there wasn't a mobile phone or the, no, this nothing. chat this or Skype this. It wasn't this even or, cable TV really back in no. the day. At least where I lived, we had like three channels. It sucked. I mean, <laughs> we were just outdoors all the time, but outdoors, there was so much. Just somehow you knew how to meet up with your friends and you'd build bike ramps and yes. so many activities. I ran around the woods with a BB gun playing army guy and you throw a snow balls at each other or when a snow day at school that was fucking magical oh my gosh inner tubes and I, how we didn't kill ourselves i don't know because there was no like helmets or not we just went for it no no i mean <laughs> we actually back then had the real game lawn darts those are brand yeah, new you can't even buy they can lawn straight darts. up kill you yeah they weren't like the weighted rounded things it was a straight up spear like yes and dude, we would throw those so high up in the air. another thing we do is shoot bow and arrows we would shoot the arrows Oh, yeah. straight up in the air and then run and i saw that in the movie grown-ups i'm like that's a real thing i used to do that holy shit someone else does that i don't see it. i don't see it where is it i lost it in the side Everyone would do it. And I even Crazy. remember like you'd be, you'd be that asshole who dare a kid to run across the field. You know why it's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the arrows are suspended, but you're right. I mean, I have such fond memories of being outside. And like you said, it, you're playing soldier in the woods. Oh, um, yeah. You know, after seeing the movie Goonies, we're talking about making booby traps. Booby traps. That's what I said, Sam. Setting booby traps in case of anybody's following us. Like if we toys so we can hear them coming. You know, you dig oh, the hole. Goonies came out. Yeah, you were on yeah. adventures and yeah. And you put the sticks over the hole with, you know, you know, grass and leaves and maybe someone would break an ankle someday. You, you just don't know. And, you know, oh, yeah. I, what about, the, you, you know, you get together with your friends. It's just like the movies you grew up with. You, you got on your bikes yeah. yeah, as a group, you went stand to the by woods. Me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stand by me. Um, the beginning of Goonies, all these yeah. movies, and you'd go to the woods, and you'd be there all day. You'd build tree houses. I mean, did you yeah. ever build like a wood fort or a tree house with your friends? Oh, all the time. Yeah, it was great, man. I lived in the Pikes Peak National Forest. It was, we had a, a thing, a mountain called Pyramid Mountain, that was behind my house, and we'd hike up it, and it was on top of it was like a cement slab with all this burnt wood. And I guess it was a boy scout cabin that burned down way back in the day, <laughs> but it was so fun. We'd go hike up pyramid mountain and just throw shit. And I'd bring binoculars up and look at stuff. And I remember one time I, <laughs> I was hiking up pyramid mountain by myself and I found a playboy magazine on the path. Me too. Bro. Do you know what I did for the entire afternoon, man? And I tucked off in the bush line and just research. <laughs> said, did a little research. It's like, hey, <laughs> what, what, look at this. <laughs> you know, that's so funny you said that because obviously today, you know, the corruption of everything digital. I mean, you just Google oh, something. But yeah. you remember back research? <laughs> said, did a little research. It's like, hey. <laughs> What, what, look at this <laughs> you know that's so funny you said that because obviously today you know the corruption of everything digital i mean you just google oh, something but yeah. you remember back in the day kids would deal. hide their porn in the yeah. woods oh yeah that's a big <laughs> deal and if you, you find discovered a stash of that talk about a goonies adventure man. <laughs> oh my god i remember coming across that first stash i can remember like yesterday it was in a blue uh gym bag <laughs> So, of course, you're opening this gym bag, you know, what's in there, and there was a good stack of nudies in there, and oh my gosh, I remember my younger brothers, you know, trying to come up on me, and I was just like, no, get away, get away, there's maggots in here, not for yeah. you. <laughs> there's a wolverine in here, you there's don't want to come wolverine. in here. <laughs> Holy uh, shit. You know, it's funny, if we still had those today, can you imagine what those uh, would be oh, worth? would be worth, Those yeah. classic vintage playboy my penthouse. brother in storage has his dad's playboys oh my gosh i actually yeah, remember the girl on the cover christy cannon or something like that Cannon. oh or i don't remember that one i remember remember <laughs> erica lineak she was in playboy oh she was in under siege she popped out of the cake top right yeah oh i, I for the youtube yeah. viewers these pictures will go <laughs> up <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys are welcome yeah, exactly <laughs> but you know what you brought up something you mentioned the the boy scouts and you know mm -hmm. i think when we were growing up, you know, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, it, it was it was cool. There wasn't all that shenanigans going on. You like wine? Actually, I prefer purified wine. 
Yeah. And actually, it, it's somewhat sad that these type of outdoor groups or organizations have Super just important. died. Yeah. And there's nothing to help guide young men today it's and, true. and That's embrace very the wilderness. Important. Yeah. Well, I grew up without a father, so organizations like that were super valuable for me it was the first time that i went like camping i got to shoot a little 22 rifle they teach you all these different skills and i remember one time there was like a puppy in the road and i was with my little boy scout outfit and i thought i was like super cop man i went out on the road and just give the old like stop and stop the car <laughs> saved the little dog and i thought i was like a superhero but what <laughs> confidence does that give a little kid like it's kind of silly looking back on it but Boy, I'd put that little shirt on with the little necktie and you get the little patch. Absolutely. Little book you had to study and, you, you, you know, my mom would help me out like, hey, I got to do, I got to do this or, you know, it you just know teaches kids to set goals, accomplish. I mean, I loved it, man. If there was a movie about you, I think that'd be a great <laughs> opening scene to foreshadow your experience as a SEAL and in a cop because here's this, here's little Clark with that bandana, that yellow Cub Scout <laughs> yeah. bandana. You know, like oh, Hulk yeah. Hogan in the middle of the street. Going, I was. You know, Gandalf, you shall not pass. Yeah, oh, I was in the middle of the road just like, nah. <laughs> this poor driver was like, look at this little retard, you know. <laughs> but, you know, but in all honesty, those, you're right, that those type of organizations, while we're growing up, mm -hmm. you know, just helped us and encourage us to get outside because, you know, it's, it was about fishing. It was about camping, yeah. like you said, shooting 22s, but also some of the stuff you learned to build uh, yeah. you know, again, I think our generation, you know, and this is nothing against other generations. Just, it's just, we didn't grow up with technology. So, yeah. you know, if you put us outside, most of us are pretty resourceful because those were our toys. I mean, let's face mm -hmm. it, you know, during the summer, the only babysitter you and I had was mother nature. Yeah, exactly. When you had to be creative, you had to use your imagination Yes. Come up with different scenarios, all that kind of stuff. Well, now it's so spoon fed to you. They play these balls deep fucking role playing games. And I mean, everything's a balance. I get it. If I was a kid nowadays, I'd probably be crushing Mountain Dew, playing Call of Duty and all that. But I'm glad I didn't because yeah. it forced me. And it's not even for me growing up without a dad. It was a great outlet to learn dude stuff. Because I didn't have a male in my family to teach me dude stuff. You know, they tied that little wooden car you had to build and race and all that stuff. But even just outside of all that, just outdoor sports that yeah. my mom involved me in. I love, I grew up playing soccer. That was great outdoors type thing. Or even yeah. just activities. I was a big cloud watcher. Now, I don't know why every cloud eventually turned into a penis. <laughs> but I, I saw boobs. <laughs> I, I'm sure if there's a psychiatrist out there, could you please analyze uh, Ryan and I's cloud visions? Uh, he saw boobs and I saw wieners. So I, oh. But I just, I mean, I would lay on the roof of our house, a nice mountain house, fairly isolated. And it was just like for hours and just your creativity. Yep. And yep. it just, it, I wasn't just staring into some smartphone, just like some drone well, you know I, I think you bring up an interesting point i think back then you're right we i don't want to say we were forced to be creative but we were very creative with our imaginations you know like yeah. like you said we'd play goonies or we'd play star wars we'd play we'd act out red dawn or, or the movies we saw unfortunately i think today is there's there's these young kids are basically constructing a social media version of themselves or a gaming version so like That's like you true. said call of duty or they're building these personas and yeah. they're acting more as producers of their own reality show that's true i never thought of it that way yeah you can kind of pretend to be exactly. something you're not because of all these other platforms which i mean i guess loosely in a way we were doing it but it was more of a role-playing adventure sense like you know cowboys and indians or whatever you're going to play it was imagination creating that it wasn't these fake pictures or right whatever apps you can change the way you look and it just seemed a little bit more innocent the technology age not that it's all bad it seems to be more manipulative than just yeah. using creativity or imagination it doesn't have to be but i think a lot of people get sucked into that that realm especially to keep up with the joneses if their friends at school are doing something that they might do something whereas when we were kids it wasn't a competition and it wasn't broadcasted to the entire universe either no the stupid shit we did was within the group that you were with you know so it wasn't yeah. like forever out there in the digital age you know 
Well, I think there's also correlation if you think about it. Like our generation or growing up without technology is we we craved that freedom and independence and, and going mm-hmm. outside gave us that freedom and independence. Also think about we you, you know we weren't scared to drive we weren't scared to move out of the house you know right away and yeah, go get jobs sure. and unfortunately you know as as people are be staying inside more and becoming more technology dependent you know that's why kids of today are less likely to take risk or wanting to leave the the nest or wanting to do this and that so you know it, it's 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 sad and mm-hmm. you know hopefully you know people out there that are listening today that are parents, you know, the message is it, it falls on us. Shame on us. If we're not getting our kids out and doing this stuff, you know, go build the bow and arrows with them, go play the games. And those of you that are younger listening to this, get your ass and go camping right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's a good point. If you're a parent, you know, make your kids in a fun way. Uh, Road trips was a big thing when I was a kid, you know, we would travel out to Hastings, Nebraska from where I was at in Colorado and, Road trips were great. <laughs> Back to the Playboy. I eventually <laughs> stole my brother's Playboy collection on one road trip. My mom never knew, and I hope she never listens to my podcast. I think she's smart enough not to. But Did I you see to, the like, callus on your hands? I mean, come on. No, I used to hold up a picture of the centerfold on the window as we passed cars. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> my, my mom, maybe I think I got away with it. And the whole time she's looking at me in the rearview mirror, like this idiot, this idiot. But that, I mean, that made road trips fun. You know what I mean? Like I just, that type of, it reminded me of the, the movie, uh, vacation. Oh, you know, uh, uh, Kevy chase and all that stuff. Yes. Oh, there's- I think you're all fucked in the head. We're 10 hours from the fucking fun park and you want to bail out. Well, I'll tell you something. This is no longer a vacation. It's a quest. There's another great movie clip. Boop, boop. You know, it, these things just roll naturally. But yeah. I do actually have some questions for you because uh, of the background uh, you have specifically. Um, playing outside growing up and doing all the things we've mentioned from, you know, building stick weapons and, and you know, maybe booby traps or rock fights or mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Or, you know, like you said, you played maybe capture a flag or different teams in the woods where you're learning to – you know, creep and approach and things like this. Do you feel that doing those things as a kid gave you an advantage going into your training in the military? Oh, absolutely. Especially my ninja phase. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. No, seriously. I was a huge fucking wannabe ninja. And it was funny. I would find myself at different times in different careers with the balaclava, the ninja mask creeping around. I thought, I'm just, I'm like, I'm fucking 10 years old again. I've got a ninja mask on creeping around. <laughs> it was so yes. fun. But yeah, it was that desire to, to do sneaky peeky stuff and, and just being comfortable outside. One of my favorite stories was when I was in SEER school, which is survival school, stands for survival, leave, aid, and resistance, escape. And it's a military school for anyone who operates behind enemy lines. So primarily it's designed for pilots, but special operations has to go to it. Some type Intel units go. So they partner you up. And I was in a three man team, but one of my partners was an F-18 pilot out of New York who had Hmm. never been camping. And this dude was get out of here. Fucking miserable the whole time. Oh my (laughs) just this guy hated life and I'm a hillbilly from Colorado. Like we're out in the woods hiding from people. I'm like, bro, this is like a, this is a vacation. Thursday afternoon, man. This is great. <laughs> what are you talking about? He was miserable though, but that is exactly like what we're talking about. Here's this sheltered rich kid, you know, that became an F-18 pilot from New York and yep. boy, outside of the cockpit, he's a pussy. I mean, he just fucking hated life yeah. and I loved it. I mean, this was great. And, and Other than they eventually capture you and beat your ass, that part sucked. But the well, evasion it, part was great. Out of all the guys that should pay attention, you know, it's it's you eject. You, you, yeah, you better, that's you better know of, how to evade. They get very little field training, and yeah. so that's the real purpose of the story. Is to, you know, I'm sure the academy or wherever OCS, wherever he went, they do, you know, like a couple of days of land nav. It's real basic. They don't get into it like any type of ground pounding combat. MOS will get into it. And so this is kind of a refresher to get into more detail for those guys. Right. And he was just miserable. It got so bad to the point I would tell him and my other partner, you guys stay right here. I'm going to go to our next point. You get the coordinates and there's always a little reward, like a carrot or half an apple. And I would bring it back and we'd split it up. 
but I wouldn't even move with them because I know they would compromise us because they're so, the other guy was all right. He was some type of helicopter dude, like a crew chief or a crewman or whatever it is. But the pilot dude was a train wreck, man. But, he just crying at night and shit. <laughs> like, was he, sure, was he your up. age, Clark, or was he younger? Uh, at that time, probably about the same age. Okay. Well, yeah. again, I, I think it has to do how you grow up. I mean, you know, I, I, a dear friend of mine it went in the Air Force, you know, shout out to Dr. Ross and yo. Um, and he loved that school, the survival school. He was having fun because, again, he grew up like we did, get your ass outside, you know, yeah. play in the woods. Guess what? You're going to get bit by bugs, tough, mm-hmm. tough shit. Um, yeah. You know, you're going to get dirty. Again, tough shit. Um, so uh, you're right. I think it has to do, not everyone experienced what we experienced. It, again, it's per- personality. Um, another question for you. Okay. I, I just want to see. Um, <laughs> hold on, mag change. <laughs> <laughs> Good vibes will return after these messages. Now back to good vibes. Um, you know, did you did you have a club like you know like a bunch of you guys? Did you have like a name like a club you you know like that you boys invented or something? <laughs> no, not really. And I think part of it was where I lived was so I don't know what the word is not populated. I grew up about thirty minutes outside Colorado Springs, so really, it was usually just a couple of us. Unless I would go into the city when I got older in junior high and in high school, I would, I had more friends, but then I got into girls and I did stuff my oh, dude yeah. friends because girls yeah. can do shit. Dude friends can't do. I mean, technically dude friends can do that, but that's a different genre than I, dude, I want. So. We're, we had uh, clubs and it was like the, our version of biker gangs, but we're on BMX, right? <laughs> so, nice. you know, we had our different tribes, right? So I, I remember ours, it was called Strike Force. Oh, and, you know, nice. here we are riding around the neighborhood. We think we're just badass. And then like, you know, yeah. you pass, you're passing the other guys and you're like, hey man, <laughs> we're the Hells Angels. You're the outlaws. What's going down? You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Don't come near our tree house, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, that goes back to the imagination piece for sure. <laughs> no, no, it, it, exactly. And so it, I think, again, being outside just flourishes that. And, and I had another question for you, too. Um, you, again, we talk offline. We've both been through a lot of shit in our life. You know, um, you know talk to me. Tell me on how the outdoors has saved you personally and you know could you share that with the audience yeah for sure it's been a huge part in some of the jobs i've done it's been a mandatory part of the job obviously most of my military career was spent in an outdoors environment but i'll tell you what when i was a cop in a way it was outdoorsy because you drive around the city get out of your car i used to walk around neighborhoods a lot you go on calls you walk to people's houses and stuff but the outdoor part that I reconnected with during my time as a cop was going camping. Mm. One of my cop buddies was a big camper. Northern Arizona has a lot of cool places to camp. And I thought, wow, that would be fun. And back then I was doing 410, so I had three days off. Mm. So what was nice is I would come right off shift, we would pack up and I would go and we would find a place and set up. So we had usually uh, like two days, three days and two nights type of deal. And I tell you what, the reset that would give me before I went back into the city and had to deal with a big shit sandwich for another 40 hours yeah. was huge just for my mental health. There was something magical about being back in the woods. It reminded me of my childhood. I bought one of those camping hammocks I could string up and just stare at the stars, yeah. stare at the clouds again, see more dick shaped clouds. You know, it's so <laughs> <Yes>. therapeutic. Freud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was another one. That's so weird. <laughs> but that was so huge for my mental health when I was a cop because for my first few years, 
I was just balls deep in that profession, trying to learn everything I could and running and gunning. And then when I hooked up with my buddy, Tim, he got me back into camping and it's fairly inexpensive. Once you have all the shit you need and you don't have to go crazy with it, you know, a tent and sleeping bag and some sleeping pads or whatever. And uh, we were set and we just started going. It went from once a month, twice a month to almost every weekend. And it was so amazing. There's just something about like the open landscape, the trees. We had this one place we camped, I call it the Eagle's Nest. And it was just like this little cliff kind of thing that pushed out over this valley. And we'd camp right on the edge of it. And just to kind of walk to the edge and just look down on these valleys. And it was just like, man, it was so amazing. So for me, during that time frame, it was a huge mental health piece. It really reset me so that when I had to go back into the city, I was so relaxed. So I have never slept better in my life than when I'm camping. That's the truth. I just rack out. You know, we'll cook a little bit crack a few beers, probably crash out around 10, 10 30, I'm guessing. And we would sleep straight until the sun came up and I would wake up so refreshed. It was amazing. Like, wh- why don't I sleep this good in a comfortable bed at home? It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And, and you know what? Um, I, I can relate, obviously not as law enforcement, but, um, you know, I, I come from a divorced family and, you know, so, and, you know, that's tough on, on kids growing up. And, you know, I, I was lucky enough to get an opportunity to get some work in Canada around that time. And, and I actually attribute that for probably saving me mentally um, where, like you said, you know, you got the, there's so many stars at night, you, you know, you could actually see the Milky way and, yeah. and oh, you yeah. just, it puts things in perspective on how small we are. So when you're looking at your problems, it's kind of like, dude, it, there's so much more to light. There's so much more out there. So mm-hmm. it, it was really the outdoors, like you're saying, that that helps recenter you spiritually and, and mentally. So yeah. I, very, you know, I'm, and I'm I, dead honest. Anyone out there going through anything. Get outside, man. Get yeah. outside. Just even, you know, even if you have a shitty day, if you come home, go take, go take a walk, a, a hike or or do something. It's, it's the fresh air and it's that vitamin D from the sun. And, and actually mm-hmm. what I want to talk about now with you, Clark, is let's just face it. This COVID thing sucks. We're yeah, all- it's definitely keeping people locked up, scared to go outside. And there's a huge psychological component that goes with that. You know, Mother Nature has a way of keeping things in perspective. For some reason, when you're out in nature, some of my favorite memories are being on the Shiloh when I was out in the middle of the ocean. The nearest piece of land is the ocean floor. <laughs> He's <laughs> just like, I don't know, 30 miles down. Right. It, but it was so peaceful in the daytime, even better in the nighttime, because it's like you're at a planetarium. The stars, imagine being yeah. blacked out on a ship in the middle of the ocean. There's nothing darker. There's no light no. to the horizon, 14 no. miles in all directions, as far as you can see. And you see so many stars. I will say, if you're out at sea long enough, you start seeing some weird shit. <laughs> I was going to ask you because, Dude. you know what? I, I don't know one Navy man who has not seen Dude, shit. Did you ever see like an old nautical chart and they draw like a sea monster? You're like, what the fuck <laughs> yeah. are they drawing that for? You will see shit like that. And you're like, did well, I? What uh, the uh, fuck? Would, <laughs> you know, what was it? <laughs> again, for a conspiracy theorist out there, you know, they, they say the aliens <laughs> keep their ships under the ocean. So yeah. I'm sure you've seen crazy lights, too. Dude, weird shit, man. I, the, my favorite were flying fish, man. A lot of flying fish in the Persian Gulf. That's we, funny. You know, this might have to be an episode of all the weird shit you saw while you did your sea. stint on the ship. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. I think it'd be hilarious. Oh, a lot of weird shit, man. It's, uh, <laughs> and it's kind of scary, too, because you realize, like, if you got beef with someone on the ship Ooh. and you're, you're on aft watch by yourself... If that dude knocks you out and throws you overboard, it's going to be a long time before yeah. I talk about that would be, that would suck to be in the middle of the ocean in the middle of the night with that sharks. You know, you're like, fuck. I used to, we have these things called dog and wrenches. They actually sleeve over the, the handles on the doors and you use them to like leverage to pull them down. I'd keep a dog and wrench in my pocket. Seriously. Yeah, because I don't know, you know, someone comes up behind you on the oh, ship. Yeah. Like your own imagination gets a hold of you, man. You're you're Clark. You're you're the dude. I mean, who's uh, gonna want to do anything to you, man? If anything, they'd want to tickle fight you instead of throw you overboard. No, <laughs> hey, being at sea for too long, it makes people weird, man. It, it turns into uh the movie The Shining, you know? 
Yeah, well, just share your Playboys and you'd be good. <laughs> oh. But I want yeah, to get back to the, the signal bridge, yeah. The COVID thing because we we have um a lot of listeners out there. We're all mm. experiencing the same thing. This house arrest, you know, it, it doesn't matter if you're single. It doesn't matter if you're married. It doesn't matter if you're living with your girlfriend. It doesn't matter if you're kids. It is, it is nasty. And I, I think what Clark and I want to tell our listeners out there is you should make it mandatory to get outside. You should make it part of your weekly routine to do something to lift your spirit emotionally. If that's that walk in the woods by yourself, or if that's go sit by the lake, go fishing for God's sakes. Yeah. Right now is probably the most important time to do something outdoors. Wouldn't you think? Even if it, yeah, hundred percent. Even if it's just a walk through your neighborhood. I love to jog through my neighborhood because it's very green here and it's nice. Um, and it depends. I, I Obviously some people might be elderly they might have some physical limitations, whatever it is. Yeah. Most people can at least go for a walk. My advice is 30 minutes a day, like I made my daughter do. 30 minutes a day, go outside and do something, even if it's sitting in your backyard. My wife and I sit out back by the fire pit in our camping chairs, and we see squirrels running yeah. around and birds. And yeah. I mean, even that's relaxing. Just for me to see the color green, to see all these trees that are around is amazing. So even if you have some limitations for whatever reason, just get outside and sit. Even that is you, meditative and relaxing. You'd be proud of me. I MacGyvered the shit out of my Weber Smoky Grill, right? So oh, nice. It's a, you know the old school round one, mm. and you know it's rusting. And wife says throw it away, and I said, I go, no, <laughs> we're gonna MacGyver the shit out of this. I need a blade of grass, a rubber band, and you know some WD forty. But you know what? We actually did it. I know this is so ghetto, but I don't give a shit. It's COVID. Is we actually now take camping logs. And we make a bonfire. Uh, Who cares? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Right? It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's our ghetto fire pit, but at least it's given us that, I don't want to say excuse, but it's given us a reason to get outside, have a couple, you know, Coca-Colas around the fire and just, like you said, look at the stars, man. Enjoy. Absolutely. Well, that, and there's something therapeutic about fire too, man. That's one of my favorite things about camping. In the military, we always called it channel one because that was the only TV we were going to watch for several <laughs> weeks. But I tell you, it was just, there's something primal in us as humans. You get a group of people and there's a fire. We circle up and we just stare into it. Yeah. And then the stories yeah. you share and talk about, it has a way of really bringing out some deep shit. Like you really, you'll hear someone you've known for years say something so deep. You're like, whoa. What yeah, the where the fuck, fuck did that yeah, come from? Holy shit. Like it's, <laughs> it's just something, it's the best therapist in the world is a fire pit it just so calming so hypnotizing i yeah. love it yeah, and i know fire is great you and i are, are cigar guys so there's nothing oh, better yeah. than outside Same with that. watching fire the smoke pit. roll off a cigar oh, oh man nothing better yeah cocktail <laughs> we advocate hand. the use of tobacco but we love it <laughs> hey you know what we're grown adults we've we've decided our paths and so don't judge us it's it's true it's just don't what it haters. is man it and, is and guess what all of us have our own sins. So, you know what? If you don't, you're full of shit. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> something about uh, he who's without sin may cast the first stone. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> don't uh, judge it, us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's unfortunate times. And, you know, again, I think it's our responsibility to make that time. And, and I got to be honest, I've been guilty of the excuse wagon of, you know, why I'm not going outside and why I'm not going on my hikes, why I'm not doing that. And it's so easy to get into a rut, you know, where you wake up every morning and you're working from the computer and, you know, you, you then go through your rest, your routine through the day and you go to bed and rinse and repeat. Um, and I could see this as this is going on, this COVID thing is we're going to get more disconnected from the routine that is actually good for us. Definitely. And that's why I think it's important. Like, again, make it your point. If you have a dog, then you have no excuse. And, and good on you. You're getting well, the dog outside, wants right? wants to be outside, yeah. Go you know, buy another, a dog. <laughs> another thing for me has been a fitness piece to this whole thing is once the gym shut down, I thought, oh, shit, what am I going to do? And it's actually been a blessing in disguise 
Sorry, I'm trying to hide a burp. <laughs> like, Rip, it. Go, Rip it. Is he okay? What's he doing? <laughs> I, I was kind of pissed off when the the gyms first closed. I'm like, fuck. And then I thought, you know, well, how did we work out when we were in remote locations in the military? Right. All this CrossFit shit, all these kettlebells and sandbags and whatever. That was all we just, whatever we had around these TRX straps, those were all just, you know, ingenuitive dudes that were trying yeah. to make some form of a gym over there in the sandbox with sandbags and ropes and things, whatever we could find, right. you know, rims from Humvees, Humvee tires, sledgehammers, whatever we could find. And so I thought, dude, that's perfect. So what that forced me to do is leave the routine and comfort of an indoor gym, which isn't really different than just, you know, being anywhere else. Now I come home and I go out in the backyard for 30 minutes and it feels so good to be outside. I got a pull up bar, dip bar combo. I got some tires, sledgehammers, I got a little kind of a mini bench. I can do some, you know, dumbbell work from whatever, battle ropes, things like that. Nice. But what I realized is, wow, this is forcing me to, to be outside, which is great. My job right now, I'm outside. I would, I mean, not the whole time. I mean, it, there is some admin stuff I got to do, so it's kind of half office, half outside. But that definitely, there's a fitness component to being outside. I highly encourage, especially since a lot of shit shut down. You yeah. get a little backyard gym going on. You don't need a lot. You can kind of use some shit that's laying around. There's plenty of videos and ideas of things. So that, that's been a big bonus as far as Mother Nature being good and, and helping out, you know? Yeah, and we covered some of that on a prior podcast. But I'd have to agree. It's kind of it's kind of ironic right now that uh, most of us, you know, during this quarantine, we all have our version of Muscle Beach. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? yeah, exactly. It's true. <laughs> It is like Muscle Beach. It is Muscle Beach. I remember you know, going it, there as a kid. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it, you know, it, and it's not weird if you want to pose like that and your neighbor's walking <laughs> by. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I love it, man. That's <laughs> fun. It's funny. I just realized, uh, depending on where you live, governors and mayors are telling you to stay inside and we're telling you get the fuck outside. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I mean, again, the worst thing you could tell someone: lock yourselves in your home and listen. Hide from the world. You know, it's crazy. You know, Clark and I, we 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 don't want to get political. We don't want to get sucked in that stuff. This is about good vibes. But you know, let's let's face it. Okay, this there is so much fear out there, and it's ridiculous to. Mm -hmm. And I think it when it comes to a point where it starts to, you know affect you personally or your family then you got to take ownership of that and and taking ownership is your mental and physical health so Absolutely. it's imperative that you get outside now we're not saying go 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 to some con outdoor concert with a hundred some people or something like that. none of you that shit just sit in your backyard that's safe but you're still outside look yeah look at the suicide rate skyrocketed because of this virus people are losing yeah. their rights cabin fever it, it is people, we're meant to be social but to me, that's not just social with people. It's, it's to be social with nature. We're not meant to live in these little homes with Wi-Fi. We're meant genetically as cavemen to be out in the wilderness, to thrive, to hunt, all that type of stuff. And so it, it destroys the human mind and the human body to just be cooped up all day. We need to be outside. We don't need to social distance from other nature. That's not a thing. <laughs> no, it, it, it's kind of freaky because with, with the introduction of technology over the past, you know, 10, 15 years where, you know, generation Z is like that first generation to literally grow up online. That's all they know. And then we have this COVID thing. It's like straight out of matrix, right? It's like mm -hmm. they want us to wither away and and disconnect where it's some just people like, are some people are, they are. Doing that exact thing you know it's because we're we're losing touch of our humanity and what makes us human which is part of like you said it it's rooted in our dna to be outside we're, we're neanderthals embrace that shit we're savage exactly 100 percent. yeah and that's not just with other people but i really believe our interaction with nature it it's hard pressed to find someone who's upset that's outside of nature. I've never seen anyone pissed off at the beach. I've never seen, I mean, not that it doesn't happen. Like, bro, you're hitting on my chick, that type of thing. But just people are happy at the beach. People are happy at the lake. People are happy in the mountains. You know, it's just something yeah. 
it Good resonates point. with the human mind. Like you'd never have a bad day out in the wilderness other than like a grizzly bears attacking you. That's a bad day. I'll give you that one. But yeah, but you know, you, you just brought up something that, that's, I mean, you know, we're giving a lot of examples of like the woods and wilderness and we go camping. Cause that's, that's our shtick, but you know, yeah. you're absolutely right. If you're a beach guy, go play volleyball, yeah. go, you know, go, go to a park and play Frisbee. Who doesn't go, have a little exactly. park in the neighborhood? Yeah. It, you it, don't have to be extreme outdoors and go mountain climbing or repelling, you know? No, it's just get outside. So I want to ask you some final thoughts on this because then I want to go into the new, a new segment for our audience. Nice. So I like it. I like where I, this is headed. I would like to hear <laughs> your final thoughts. What is the good vibes to our listeners um, with the basically getting outdoors? What is the good vibes? Dude, I would, the good vibes is go be naked with nature, man. <laughs> absolutely man go get burning man on that shit go yeah, go it. dance and frolic and drink and and whatever burn something it, it, yeah. not a bonfire <laughs> <laughs> jeez yeah dude i mean that's i just think reconnect with nature get outside like we just said it doesn't have to be anything extreme even if it's just sitting outside for 30 you know my mom loves to read outside she'll go outside in the yard and read a book outside so just get outside that's my only advice or suggestion to you what you do out there how extreme for how long that varies but i promise you the more you get outside the more good vibes you're going to have 100 percent. no and i couldn't agree with you more and i think i think the what i take away from chatting with you today is like you said when you were a cop in that extreme stress in, in oh, yeah. again, everyone needs to push pause and where can you recenter yourself And nature did that a lot. And, and again, I can re- relate with a divorce. It's, it's nothing, nothing close to being a, a police officer, but there is that common theme and it's proven that if you, if you get out to nature, there's something spiritual that does recenter your, you know, your energy. And that is, that is all the good vibes. So, you know, again, if you're if you're in this shit right now, just just go outdoors, man. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, dude, you, like you you said, how good did you feel in your stressful times when you were in Canada or whatever with Mother Nature? Amazing. I, it's just, I mean, dude, I I had Canadian beer, which is like whiskey and poutine. How can you go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah, go full hippie, everyone. <laughs> full hippie so i i want to get into this new segment we're going to do and, and i'm excited about this that you know clark and i were talking about um we're going to do something called the dude's court and you know with like clark's it. clark's background of law enforcement you know i thought it'd be funny if i take stories from around the country of basically people doing crimes or maybe not doing them right I'm going to give Clark the headline and maybe a snippet. And Clark, being the dude's court, he's going to give a sentence. Are you up for this, Clark? I am. I'm looking for my gavel. I want to, like, bang on my <laughs> dude, table. We have to get you a good vibes gavel. I love it. And a little it. robe. <laughs> okay. Now, to our audience, I am not making any of this shit up. This is real news. And if you if you don't believe me, feel free to comment. I will give the source. Okay. Are you are you ready, Judge Clark? <laughs> That's it. Okay. Let's do it. Send the it. The first one comes from the great state of Ohio, specifically Akron. And a woman called the cops because she thought the store bought meat was a penis. <laughs> wow. I, I, like I said, I'm not making this up. So a woman basically wasted the time in the cops. If she was to come in front of you who saw a piece of meat and thought it was a penis, what would be your sentence? I would be like, ma'am, you're talking to a guy who sees dicks out of clouds, man. <laughs> <laughs> I see dicks everywhere. And yes, that does look like a penis. Put it in your mouth. I mean, yeah. eat it. <laughs> Yeah, did you test that? I mean, I find it ironic that she bought meat. She must not be yeah. familiar with handling the right type of meat. Yeah, maybe but, it was a penis, like Lorena Bobbitt was the butcher. Well, that's why she called <laughs> the, the cops. The full article went into Is it a real penis? shape it. No, it ended up being like a pig's tail. So, I mean, or something like that. I mean, give me a break. I mean, she must have seen some skinny minis, which is fine. Good on you. 
you know. Holy shit. But yeah. um, for, for that lady <laughs> out in Akron, um, you know, more than happy, you know, if, if we need to send you certain <laughs> images of what cock looks like so you're not, uh, you know, yeah. thinking a ribeye or a filet. I'll Photoshop some dick pics. <laughs> <laughs> Check this one out. Yeah, this shit's not made up. So it, I got, I got, I got that's a good one. one. I, got, I okay. like that one. You're gonna like this one. Okay. Did you? You didn't catch this, but I I, re, I read this random shit. Uh, Florida woman accused of urinating on husband after fight. Nice. Okay. Supposedly they were on a boat together, got in a wicked fight. The husband passed out. And she dropped trout and pissed on his head. Judge Clark, what would sentence would you give this female urinator? I want to party with him on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I would sentence them to three days at sea with a bunch of booze. <laughs> going. You know, I, I like quite honestly, I think the best justice would you, would, you know, eye for an eye type of thing. I think. Get a group of your buddies. Yeah. You gotta get a yeah. keg of beer. You gotta grill asparagus, and you unleash the fury on this woman. <laughs> I mean, asparagus and keg of beer. That's what I'm thinking. Wow, that went dark real quick. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, can you imagine that guy? I mean, I don't care what type of fight you had. You know, you paid the bill late, you know, the whatever. This dude <laughs> is probably had a couple beers. He's on the pontoon. He's having a good yeah. time. He didn't mean like, to pee on her. He's like, oh, sorry. Oh, she it. peed on him, though. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, but he feels safe enough to pass out or maybe fall asleep on this boat. She got him. She, I mean, that is yeah. gnarly, dude. It is pretty bad. I, by the way, we're putting all these mug shots up. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> on the YouTube. Nice. Yeah, except for the penis one because she was not arrested. She was that's just stupid, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, that, I wouldn't know what to tell her. Be like, poor lady. It, yeah, it doesn't look like a dick. I mean, if you if you were to show up, would would you kind of give her a hug and be like? I was like, do you, do you need some dick? I mean, I can call a buddy. I got single buddies. Do you like a man in uniform? <laughs> you kind of put your arm around and be like, darling, we, we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, back to the pee thing. When I was in college, someone peed in the lemonade uh, dispensing machine. Shut up. In the in the, yeah. like, in the cafeteria. The cafeteria. How? And I remember when it happened, because I used to get four glasses they were smaller glasses you know kind of whatever smaller to medium sure i'd always get four filled with ice in my food and the lemonade tasted no like way shit. you tried it you tasted yeah. it yeah so what i did i was like oh man i just thought man they didn't put sweetener in it or something so what i did is i put a bunch of sugar in it <laughs> i crushed four glasses of it and then it comes out like a week later that a dude got kicked out of school for peeing in the lemonade machine and i was oh, like way Son of a bitch. I know exactly when that happened because I fucking drank it. Oh, my God. Sugar in it. I was like, oh, they just forgot to put sweetener. I want to circle back to your survival. So would your recommend your recommendation would be to keep Never. sugar packs with you at all times? <laughs> so in case you have to drink your pee, you can never drink it? your pee. No, never <laughs> drink your pee. Hey, listen, Bear Grylls lives on that shit. So Bear Grylls is a fruit loop, man. He's not. He's been in country like, oh, the helicopter just set me down. Let me drink my pee for survival. It's like, bro, you literally just landed from the helicopter. <laughs> it's me... never a good idea to drink your pee. And by the way, <laughs> not to like. Uh, What's it called? Uh, not photo bomb. Oh, I'm trying to think when you ruin a story. Anyway, at no point in time in Chris Ryan's story, which is a survival, did he drink his pee? At no you know point what? in time. That is a fantastic. Did you never do it? It's a fantastic. Crazy. Part. I mean, he goes in a little bit of like you know potential bathroom situations. Spoiler being alert! Your mates. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? Never drink your own pee. That's horrible. Bear Grylls was like a reserve dude for two years and, I don't know, hurt, got hurt. <laughs> oh, my god. He gosh. wasn't even a real SAS guy. That would have been a great question for Chris Ryan. You, you know, you we, we might Bear have to Grylls? have him back. It, it, it's going to have to be him versus Bear Grylls. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I got a last one for you, and I saved the best for last. Are you nice. ready for this? All right, okay. send it. I, again, I am not making this up. I'm going to put the mug shot. <laughs> on YouTube, okay? Here's the headline for you, sir. Your your honor, your honor. Here's the headline. Man <laughs> suspected of having sex with a van. Again, a van. Out, out of the great state of Ohio, and this was in Dayton, Ohio, 
a witness reports seeing him wow. attempt to have sex with the front grill of a van parked on the street. What would be your sentence, wow. sir? <laughs> Fuck. I, well, I was going to say I sent him to like an auto body repair shop, but that's like a fucking whorehouse for him. <laughs> it would be. A, it's like Thailand for him. Is that right? a Pontiac over there? Holy shit. Oh, my gosh. Mm. I, you know what? Would him if you took like a Ford Mustang, you read the RPMs to about 6,000 RPM, oh, and then man. he has to penetrate the tailpipe. Uh, there's actually a video of a guy banging a tailpipe of a car that was popular on social what? media for a while. Yeah. I mean, but the, listen, you know what I racked this all up to? These Why people don't, don't get. Car? They don't go outside. This is the COVID craziness. That's part of the problem. Yeah. See, if you go outside, you won't be banging minivans or whatever vans or whatever. No. What if he banged the A team van, though? I might bang the A team van. That would be a. Well... I mean, just because it's the A team van. It's like or Mr. Uncle T Rico's? might beat your ass. Uncle Rico's yeah. van? See, yeah. there's, there's. <laughs> well, that you know what? That's interesting because are we talking about like the 1980s or current vans? Are we yeah, talking? What did the about... van look like? <laughs> yeah, I mean, is this the one where the bed used to be in back, and this is like, <laughs> like old school vans? Like you said, a team uh, Uncle Rico. I, I love how we're trying to justify that maybe banging a van might be okay. <laughs> well, again, when I put the dude's picture up, I mean, it just it ties oh. the whole thing together. I mean, I, I just. Can you imagine you're you're walking down the street or you're coming out of this restaurant? Yeah. You see this dude full humperdink on this van. Maybe he was learning karate Miyagi style, like you wax on, wax off or something. Like it's a move. Like you it, gotta. You I think it'd be out, traumatizing. You gotta, you gotta I mean, this van. you know what? I I wouldn't even know what to say to the guy. Like if I was to honk my car, he might get even more turned on. I don't know. <laughs> Is the van running? Get your shit caught in the fan belt? <laughs> I, oh, seriously, you can't make this shit up. I, it would be swear. funny to sneak up behind him with like a car horn sound and just scare the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, no, but he's in a car. So again, I mean, this could turn the dude on. You don't know. That's true. That's you know? True. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine like the forget the seatbelt <laughs> noise with this dude? <laughs> Shit, rush hour traffic, he's all horny and shit. Oh my gosh, A again. Love traffic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Bumper to bumper. <laughs> Dude, look at that grill. Oh, is that a man. 65? <laughs> oh man, that is so fucked up. And again, oh, the picture man. is going to tie it all together. But yeah, um, I can't wait to see what this dude looks like. Awesome. Well, that was that was awesome. I appreciate playing the dude's court, brother. Yeah, I like. I need my gavel. Court adjourned. We we need to get you a gavel. But um, I guess it's that time of uh, the day. Guess what? What it is oh, now? Oh shit! Is it the? <laughs> Fine for the news. <laughs> <laughs> emails emails not shemails those oh. are in thailand this emails yeah what are they called they i thought they have a, a specific name not to in thailand the yeah they were oh they call I, them lady boys yeah they, yeah and their real name is katoy is what the that's Thais what i was katoy. thinking yeah 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 the lady boys katoys <laughs> oh my gosh vans uh, vans <laughs> vans <laughs> Channies and vans, vans, oh channies and vans. <laughs> All right, what, what do we got from our, our listeners? Let's uh, let's start with Mike. Mike, what do we got? Mike, I'm going to actually read his. It was kind of cool. And then he follows up with a really cool question. I think we're both going to jump on this one. Okay. So Mike, uh, he emails in, uh, as I've been debating career paths in my late 20s, the Life Lessons episode really helped me make my decision. I was hesitant to make a change, seeing that I spent most of my 20s pursuing one career, and now with the change, I would basically be starting out as a new guy again. That episode reminded me to be bold and take risks. That's what life's all about. Embracing the unknown, taking life head on with a battle axe in one hand and a bottle of whiskey in the other. Amen. Keep up the good work. Rock on, brother. So I wanted to read that because it's nice. Ryan and I get a lot of emails, messages of just really great feedback of how some of the episodes have, you know, affected people, helped people influence some of their decisions. And that's a very humbling experience that not only we enjoy being funny and happy and making people smile, but we do try to put out some content that 
hopefully he's helping people. Even if it just helps a handful of people, our, our mission's accomplished, you know? So these emails, thank you, Mike, for, for sending that in. It means a lot. I usually don't read emails cause they're kind of personal, but it, it just, it was nice to illustrate how some people Absolutely. really appreciate the episodes, man. So here, Absolutely. let's do a cheers to Mike real quick and then I'll get to the question. Yeah. Cheers to you, Mike. Yeah. Cheers, Mike. Appreciate I like it. the uh, battle ax in one hand and a bottle of whiskey in the other. Like, holy shit. All is right. there any other way to drink whiskey? Straight up some Viking shit. Hell yeah. All right. So Mike's question is, if you had Doc Brown's DeLorean for a week, hmm. where would you go and what would you do? Who? <laughs> Ooh. Okay. You, yeah. you want to go first? You want me to go yeah, first? Yeah, or... I'll kick it off. Straight up ancient Rome. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's where I would go for the whole week. But But why? uh orgies and gladiator <laughs> games you know what i mean i feel um, stupid for even asking why well, i'd hang out with caesar eat some grapes dude that's Might awesome conquer some shit with the legion you know just go oh, let's go fuck that country up it looks fun you know, <laughs> all right well i gotta be back for the orgy by tuesday so sharp, <laughs> sharpen your swords gents <laughs> I, I love it ancient love rome it. that's it man bam Man, I'm 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 a lot simpler. I'm not going as far back. I I'm thinking 1969 San Quentin Prison, Johnny Cash. Wow. You know, I I want to see Johnny Cash perform at San Quentin. But as a runner-up, and I know you would appreciate this, is 1991 the airfield in Moscow, Metallica. Oh damn! Sorry, Rome. I have a new destination. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, God, hey, let yes. me change the dials on the DeLorean. <laughs> Say, man. Say, man. Let's not go to ancient Rome. Let's roll it back to 1991. <laughs> oh, dear, right. We were just talking about that last night because I just bought really? the Metallica S&M 2. We got about halfway through it. And my wife asked, what's the largest concert Metallica's played for? Because this arena they did in San Francisco is packed. Sure. And I said, oh, for sure, The when they were in Moscow, Moscow they yeah. estimate it was about a million. They don't know. It was just a sea of people in all directions. Yeah. I mean, it's an Air, Air Force base, right? It was. Yeah, uh, it was. It was a, some type of military base, and yeah. they were going nuts. Now, if we were at that concert, I'd want to have backstage passes because that crowd looks pretty wild, man. Oh, well, dude, we're a rocking A lot of drunk the, Ivans, man. <laughs> yeah, we're rocking the time machine. So we, It's true. When I'm talking about Johnny Cash and Metallica, I'm talking about VIP experience exactly. where we're doing shots with the dudes yes or we could go back in time to 1981 send lars back to europe answer the ad with james hetfield and then we oh. form metallica and it's like hey that that was here. genius that the see little, right there that was genius the little tennis player guy is not here but we're here <laughs> and we we already have a list of songs like we already wrote these songs for you from the future yeah <laughs> like a like bill that. and ted it's like that movie they made about that Beatles dude. I, I haven't seen it, but same no. premise, right? Oh, see? <laughs> We're going to reinvent Metallica with the DeLorean. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Great, great question, man. We, we yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, that was very cool. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. And for yep. all you guys, I got another email I want to read, but please send these in to thegoodvibesdude at gmail.com. We love it. To me, this has always been my favorite part of the show because it's just yeah. the stuff you guys come up with is – it's wonky. It's, just, it's fucking great. I love it. It so, is. Let's do yep. the next one. Next one. What <laughs> do you got? This one's from Connor. Connor. Okay. Not Sarah Connor. Just Connor. Connor with a K. Connor with a K. It says, uh, would love to hear you and Ryan's two cents on cannabis, both oh. recreational and medicinal use. Love the content. Always give a good laugh. Always <sighs> gives a good laugh. Thanks, guys. Connor. So, oh. Connor, thanks. That's, that's a good question. That's yeah. a tough question. It yeah. is. What emotions do you feel? Okay, Private Miller. You want to start? <laughs> yeah, I mean. I'll throw you the hard ones. The DeLorean. I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, to be honest, again, it's two parts. One, medically, I, I'm a firm believer because I've had friends suffer. Uh, I've had friends die. and anything medically that could help someone either mentally or physically i'm a hundred percent for okay yeah, and uh, definitely you know we put out more pharma products that are man-made and chemical versus nature products so again anything medical that would lift your spirits 
mentally and physically. I'm for a hundred percent. And I don't believe government has a place in telling us mm -hmm. what we need to feel better medically. Now, recreationally, I am for the legalization of marijuana. And the reason is, is again, I'm not a big gov dude. Um, I don't think people should tell us on how to act as an adult or what we can do. Now, there's a caveat to that. I think right now is an interesting time because we're moving at 100 miles per hour, okay? And we really haven't figured this shit out yet. I mean, with, with liquor, we've we figured out on all the processes, all the in and outs, all the regulations, you know, all on how to make this as safe as possible um, for the consumer. Um, if you listen to our Narcos episode, you know, you, you'll have the guys go into this and they're hundred percent right where, you know, the traffic accidents are up in Colorado or these states that have legalized it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a bummer. I mean, that's a big issue. So I think we're in the bit of the early days, but what is really needed in the recreational is the same thing that's happened in the liquor is we need to figure out on how, I don't want to say regulate, but how can we do this responsibly without putting other lives in danger? The minute we put other lives in danger, and I don't care if you drink, smoke pot, or what have you, that's when I start having an issue with things. What about yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. No, well said, dude. I couldn't agree more. I think definitely with the weed thing, like no one's ever gone on a shooting spree high on weed. Like it's just, <laughs> you chill the fuck out. You're happy. <laughs> Um, I've tried it a couple times in my life. I'm not a huge weed dude, but I've always, I've always been in jobs where I can't do it to include this current one. So I've always right. tried it like kind of between jobs or whatever for a while after I left Phoenix police department, there was a, a foundation that would send veterans having trouble sleeping these little vape pens that had some THC wax in them. And so I, sure. I tried it because my sleep has been horrible and I didn't really I didn't really like it, but it, it definitely helped with the sleep. And I think like anything, I didn't really know what I was doing or I just, I've never, like I said, I've always had to work in jobs where I just, I couldn't partake in it. I know there's different types of it or whatever. Sure. Probably being from Colorado, I should know more about it, <laughs> yeah. but I'm all for it in that it's natural. Like, so your doctor will shove Oxycontin down your throat, no problem. And that's basically yeah. heroin. Like yeah. I, do, I don't see weed as a bad thing. And that I know it doesn't give you hangovers. I know no. it doesn't make you act violent. Anyone I've been around that's high has been kind of funny and super chill. Yeah. Even though I've only tried it a handful of times and I, I just haven't quite caught on to how it works. Or I'm kind of the guy that's tried beer four times. Like I'm not the guy really to ask about alcohol. But only in the weed world, as far as beer goes, I've had a shit ton of fucking beer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you are Yoda in that the, role. The beer meister. <laughs> yeah. But I'm all for it, dude. I think you're right, though. There is a, a caveat to it, and that's you got to be responsible with it. You can't yeah. just yeah. – it's it's any type of impairment as far as trying to, you know, operate motor vehicles or showing up to work no. fucked up. No. Uh, but I do know – I mean, as much as I love alcohol, alcohol can fuck you up. Alcohol – Yeah. I mean, in it, alcohol stays with you for a long period of time. So if you hit it hard and you wake up early for work, you're still impaired. You're still hammered. Plenty of guys show up to work when they shouldn't. And so it's, it's that same responsibility that would go with weed medically. Absolutely. I think there's huge benefit, but I also believe in recreationally there's, if you want to burn one up when you come home from work before you go sure. to bed or on the weekends, I don't see it being harmful like meth or crack. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't think that weed, Yeah. it's just this natural substance that, you know, that I mean, in my retirement, I plan on kind of being the Cheech and the Chong all wrapped up into one dude playing guitar in Colorado somewhere. That's how I envisioned myself, nice. you know? Can can I be Cheech and you be Chong? Yeah, we should do that. Dude, that'd be awesome. I'll be Tommy Chong for sure, man. Well, you, you play the guitar. That's why I can't do that. And I can just make up funny songs. Yeah. But no, I, I, I think dude, awesome. you're, you're absolutely right. And I, it's kind of ironic, right? Because there's a demon in everything, you know? Um, I don't think it's so much the product. So be it marijuana, be it liquor, even firearms. Okay. Yeah, it, sure. It's really the end user. Okay. You have a responsibility when you do these adult things 
Yeah. And if you're responsible, and again, you're not harming others, and you know, you try to minimize the harm to yourself, you know, In moderation, moderation, you know I mean? all yeah. this stuff, mm -hmm. then that's cool. Again, that's the problem. We all want to point the finger, but if we want to point the finger, again, the big pharma companies out there have been poisoning us for for decades. Yeah, exactly. You know, so again, it's up to us as the consumer. Okay, to show responsibility. That's why I hate the, the, the whole gun bullshit where it's like, you know, guns are the devil, guns are the devil. Nothing, it, all these are tools. They're all demons. They're all things you could get in trouble, right? Yeah. It is your personal responsibility on how you want to interact with things in your life. 100%. Yeah. I think that's with anything. You know, if you use it appropriately, everything in moderation. What's the intent behind it? Like you said, it's it's not the the tool. It's the guy, you know, wielding the tool that's yep. either for good or for bad. And so, yeah, as far as the weed topic, I'm I'm kind yeah. of surprised that it just hasn't become already legalized since it's already legal in however many states. I know federally it's still illegal. You yeah, know, it's, it's 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 a bizarre situation, and I, I I'm guessing without knowing for sure that there's got to be some type of resistance, maybe from the alcohol companies, tobacco companies, because it's going to compete oh, sure. with that. Sure, I know Colorado, sure. its first year they legalized it had like three times the revenue from marijuana sales than from alcohol. So I imagine yeah. there's it, some type of political game behind the curtains or financial. Oh, of course, with alcohol. lobbyists, it's it's all bullshit. But I I think from the good vibes perspective, you know, Connor. If you want to burn a joint down, if that's what you do to relax at the end of the day, as long as you're not getting behind the wheel or yeah. doing something stupid, good on you, man. If if that's what you Absolutely. need to relax, you know. You can find good vibes in a J. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, who are we to judge, man? I mean, I here I'm having, you know, beers when yeah, exactly. on the show. It's, it's our mean, way of relaxing. Yeah. yeah so exactly, so yeah. this vice is okay, but your vice, I, I mean – Exactly. Again, and I'm not saying, and again, Clark and I are not saying, you know, go, go run and get your heroin and meth and shit like that. <laughs> your medical we're, meth card. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're not for that, but if you're going to burn a J yeah, you know, around yeah. the campfire and, and laugh your ass out. That's and, outdoors when you're camping would be, exact, I imagine a dude, great spark up. Damn, the I got only threat I've ever no seen tire. from a dude smoking a J is the threat to the buffet. Right. Yeah, that's it. Bag of potato chips. I'm all over it. You know, they're gonna crush that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but again, don't get behind the wheel. It, it, you know, it doesn't matter if you drink or you smoke or whatever. Just don't be a dumbass. And don't fuck vans. No, don't know? fuck vans if you're stoned <laughs> or drunk. I mean, good it, lord. Maybe that guy was high when he was doing that. I don't know. Yeah, but he wasn't smoking pot. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, he's smoking some pot. Won't make you fuck a van. No, uh, it's I mean, been documented. <laughs> that's like. PCP acid. I mean, you know, to unleash the fury and be Conan the Bo Barbarian on that, you know, I mean, it makes no sense. But again, oh, I love it. Oh, each, Connor, to each their own, brother. To each, each their own. Hey, Connor, I hope we answered your question. I don't know how the van found its way back in the answer, but it did. It's, it's what it is. Like Thank it. you, Connor. We appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, shit, man. Well, I think we're getting close to. To wind it down, hey, real quick, because I mentioned sleep, and these guys aren't sponsors, but I love to tell people about them. The Stress RX has been a game changer for me. They're not a sponsor. I don't get paid. Um, but if you use Frogman 50, you get 50% off your first order, and it's just a deal I made with them to get people to try it because a good buddy of mine who had sleep issues told me about this, and I piggyback it with this. Uh, this is called Ollie. Don't get excited, you little weirdos out there. It's not Molly. It's Ollie. So take a little <laughs> Burning Man powder out of this. Your little <laughs> Superman tablets or whatever they are. Yeah. But it's a little gummy. So I take two of these gummies, and I take six of these Stress RX. And I tell you what, I'm out within 10 minutes. I always put on like uh, Rick and Morty or some cartoons, and I'm nice. out. I still wake up a little bit, but I'm able to go back to bed. So because I talked a little bit about why I tried weed after I left the departments because a military buddy was telling me about sleep yep. patterns. And that is huge about mental health and, and somewhat relates to outdoors because you and I both mentioned that, hey, when we're outdoors camping, we sleep like babies. So sleep is also kind of a yep. – I, I just like to throw this in there because a lot of people hit me up asking me about, especially the Stress RX. I try to mention it as much as I can because suffering from sleep fucking yep. sucks. A good night's sleep is is – 
super important. So yeah, and speaking of the cannabis thing, and again, they're not a sponsor, but but Naked Warrior, fellow team guy of yours, um, you know, uh, I I'm a CBD dude CBD, at, at yeah. night, and it yeah, helps yeah. me sleep really well. Yeah, he makes a lot of topical creams for ointments and injuries and mm-hmm. and all that type of stuff. So mm-hmm. cannabis, in and of itself, doesn't have to be like a stoner thing it, it is actually healing properties for all these different oils and creams and yep. things you can put on on stuff the cbd extracts that's part of the cannabis family no thc but it has the other properties yep of chilling you the the hell out so yep. Yep. yeah that's great man well man i tell you what i, <laughs> I had a blast man and we always we covered a little bit of childhood a little bit of camping and, and the random dude fucking a van that was my favorite part obviously <laughs> we had court, you know I- it, honestly, I again, you you have to tune in for the picture. Wait, I'm I, no, I, I threw the piece of paper. I was going to show you the picture because you'd be like, oh, oh of course he fucked a van. Oh, the dude. Oh, I have to wait till the, the video snippets get in. Oh shit, he looks like a van fucker. He's a van fucker. <laughs> I, already, I kind of picture he looks like a skinny, cracked out, methed out like Santa Claus looking dude or something. Oops. I don't know, man. Spot on, man. It's like, I've been uh, called a lot of things, but never a van fucker. <laughs> yeah, van fucker. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, dude. I love it. Well, hey, guys, definitely tune in, not just to this episode. We hope you enjoy it because definitely the outdoors is, is the way to go. But coming up on the next one's a big one yep. for Ryan and I. Yep. Uh, Chris Ryan is going to be a great interview. It's a, a very deep story. We managed to sneak in some fun, as we always do. Of no, course. Regardless of the topic, no matter what, we're going to find that silver lining and tickle you a little bit with it. So definitely uh, check that out. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We really appreciate you guys' love and support. Never forget, besides getting your ass outdoors, live large and be awesome. We love you guys. Later, guys. Well, take care, man. Gotta get back. Sure. Take it easy, dude. Oh, yeah. I know that you will. Yeah, well, the dude abides.